Hi. What's up? I'm good. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz today. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to begin our conversation before we get into by by the last man. I want to know how did you get through the pandemic? The last three and a half years was really hard on musicians. How did you get through it? And how good does this album feel coming out now? It feels amazing, first of all. Um, yeah, the pandem pandemic that was uh, that was hard. Uh, I think. Maybe for me, it was a bit easier than for some because being a musician is, uh, is new for me and I was still in school uh, and I actually, I am still uh, at the conservatory, uh, but uh, in Denmark. Um, so, so when the pandemic was, uh, was there, I didn't, I didn't play that much at that time, uh, concerts and so on. So for me, it was okay, but you know, Making music is something you do with uh, real people, right? So uh, sitting uh, in, in a room, uh, recording yourself and uh, stuff like that, writing music for yourself, that's just, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> well, speaking of writing music, talk to me about, this is your second album. Um, I'm curious, what went into this? What were, what were kind of the, uh, what was the vision of making this album? Yeah, so... We, this is the second album uh, with my uh, my band to be a Star Wars Uh and for the first album it was kind of my first attempt uh, at writing music. Uh, so so I was kind of uh, taking more chances. I think on this uh, second album, I was uh, looking uh, more into uh, composing, uh, more thoroughly into composing, uh, looking into uh, classical uh, composition uh, techniques. And, uh, and stuff like that, uh, yeah. So talk to me a little bit about what you're hoping the listener gets from this album. I, I'm i hoping more than anything that the listeners will get the kind of the mood, the atmosphere on this album. I think it's, uh, it's quite special. I was uh, inspired by um, universal history. It's called, it's a kind of a, a philosophical theme in the, in the, um, in, in history writing and I think I've kind of uh, I've taken the the mood or the atmosphere of this topic and kind of uh, made music around that so I hope that the listeners get that so how did this journey into music and jazz begin for you it uh, began at uh, a music school in uh, in, in Denmark uh, where I grew, grew up uh, north of Copenhagen and um, I had uh, an amazing teacher. I'm a trombonist myself. And uh, in Denmark, there's a bit of a tradition that if you play the trombone, you mostly play uh, classical music. But uh, I had uh, an, an amazing teacher that uh, both taught me jazz and uh, classical music. And at some point I started listening to this amazing music that uh, jazz is. And I just found out that uh, that's, that, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so who were some early jazz influences, albums, musicians that you were listening to? Uh, one of the first uh, jazz musicians I was listening to was J.J. Uh, Johnson, jazz trombonist. Yeah. And he's actually uh, probably the, the one I'm still listening to. I think you can you never get done with uh, doing that. He's, he's turning uh, 100 years uh, big next year. Oh wow! So I'm uh, I'm planning a, a kind of a tribute uh, tour, playing his music uh, with another great trombonist in Denmark. Yeah, excellent. So, what was the first live jazz show you saw that blew you away? The first live jazz show I saw. Um, that must be when I went to high school. We were a few that sometimes would go to. Uh, a legendary jazz club in Copenhagen, Jazz with Montmartre. And uh, we saw, I actually don't remember what the act was. I just remember it was uh, Alex Riegel. He's a legendary old uh, Danish jazz drummer. Uh, and even though I played the trombone, I was just amazed by by his his uh, his drum playing. And uh, and I, I, I was, I, yeah, it, that, that blew me away, that show. 
So what's the jazz scene like where you're coming out of right now? How good? What's going on? I think it's uh, it's really great in uh, in Denmark, uh, Copenhagen. There's uh, a lot of uh, of young cats playing great great music together. Also, kind of um, at the moment, there's a bit of a crossover between uh, pop and jazz. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of young uh, young jazz musicians doing. Uh, uh, pop uh, instrumental pop albums, uh, uh, kind of uh, yeah, it's it's a nice vibe. <laughs> yeah, so you know, there's all these elements that go into being a musician. You play live, you release albums, you promote, educate, all of these things. But what do you like the best mm. about being a professional musician? I think that's actually something I've been thinking a bit about uh, these days. Um, releasing my album uh, because there's of course a lot of uh, logistics practical stuff you have to do uh, when releasing an album and i think for me the most important thing is the artistry uh, practicing uh, on my instrument and writing music but next to that uh, i really enjoy being a band leader having my own band making sure that uh, the musicians in my band ha are having a good time and yeah getting enough money and all that stuff i really enjoy that so what do you like the best what, what why do you love jazz what is it about jazz that you love the most oh that's a difficult question <laughs> what is it i i like the most yeah i don't know it's it's it must be uh, how you know how interactive it is and uh, the same show is, is never really the same I, I really love that that thing and even though i kind of in my band i have uh, some of it is very like thoroughly composed but even though it is like that there's th always space for something to happen and yeah. i i really love that <laughs> The one thing that's unique about Denmark is that it was a refuge for a lot of musicians, you, you know, decades ago. I mean, Dexter yeah. Gordon, there's a lot of stories. What is that kindred spirit, that that vibe that Denmark has that welcomes so many of these musicians that really had long careers and felt great there? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I've seen some interviews and uh, where they talk a lot about the Danish girls. <laughs> but, uh, but uh... Yeah, I don't know, but you know, I talked about uh, Jesus Mamatra. That's that's actually the scene where, for example, Dexter Gordon he played a lot on, and there's there's just some there's something about it that you can kind of still feel that they were here. We have a lot of uh, streets named uh, after Dexter and uh, all the other uh, American uh, jazz cats who went here. And it's just, it's, that's just, the, that legacy is uh, amazing to be around. So let's say you have a live show in Kansas City at one of our premier event places. How would you describe one of your shows? How would you convince people in Kansas City to come see a live show? Okay, that's also <laughs> a difficult question. Um I think I would say that uh, that my band is uh, unique in the way that we kind of combine philosophy and music. It's kind of uh, a red thread uh, throughout uh, both albums that I've been inspired by by some philosophical themes and uh, and kind of making it like a complete theme for an, an album. It's just it, it's not just an album with five different songs and then two standards. It's uh, it's a complete theme, both combining the music and the artwork, and I think that's that can be a good good experience for for listeners uh, when I talk about the music and tell tell uh, tell about my inspirations. So, if you could get into a time machine, go back in time and see any jazz musician live, I think I know the answer to this. Where are you going? Who are you going to see? JJ Johnson. All right. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. are you gonna Where are you gonna see him at? Oh yeah, that's a that's a good question. Hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think actually I would like to uh, see him uh, like his one 
just before one of his first recordings. You know, yeah. when he in, in the in the forties uh, when he played like uh, like Charlie Parker, uh, because there's something amazing about him being at that time the only one in the world who could play the trombone like that. Like it was a sound you've never heard on, on a trombone, and I think that's uh, that's that's amazing. So I would re- I would love to to be able to hear that. So if anyone wants to pick up by the last man, learn about live shows, previous recordings, anything about you, where do they go? TobiasDownGold.com, my uh, website. Yeah. Excellent, Tobias. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for reaching out to Neon Jazz. This has been great, man. Yeah, you too. Many thanks for having me. Yes, sir. And before.